Well, hello folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo TA Wrap. When we take a look at these markets, we do it from a neoclassical perspective. Each time we ask ourselves one question, what happened today? What does it tell us about the coming ones? We do the show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday. We broadcast out of report 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube, available under the channel L.A. Little. As far as what happened today, you see it just as I do, up day. Markets work higher, in particular the Russell, which was uh, interesting enough uh, because, you know, the Russell has been a laggard. And uh, if this market really is going to move higher, I suspect the Russell is going to have to be one of the ones doing that. So that's a good sign. As far as the negative sign, you know, you got to go to the bond yields and ask yourself what the heck is going on here. They're trying to break down again. Dollar pushes down, euro up. That's off of Draghi and bond yields in Europe. Um, Draghi says he's going to keep his pedal to the metal. QE is as long as needed, uh, even longer if needed. Uh, that um, certainly helped the European equities, but the euro traded higher, not lower, which was kind of interesting which I think was more of a reflection of not Europe, but of what was happening here because we actually had some better economic numbers come out here. You got the employment coming, uh, employment coming, number coming out on Friday. And so when you take all that stuff together, right, kind of a mixed bag again, but equities did trade higher. If we look at them, S&P 500, uh, you know, I mean, this is a tortured move. Uh, to say the least. It trades up, back down. If we look at the uh, under-over situation, you actually had a little bit more volume. That says this thing is going to try to test higher again. Still hasn't, I mean, if you if you look at this, you know, from just the perspective of the last week and a half, remember last Tuesday after the uh, Memorial Day weekend, we had the big wide press spread bar to the downside. Ever since then, trading inside of it. Haven't traded out of it yet. Still inside of it. It's tortured. Can't go up. Can't go down. That uh, range on that bar is about 25 points. Roughly 26. 26 points. You can't go up. You can't go down. You keep trading inside of it. It will break one way or the other at some point. Right now, you know, my guess is it's still going to try to work back up and test the top but so far it hasn't been able to do that let's look at the rest of these see if there's anything interesting okay so nasdaq uh, nasdaq goes up test the top right now this is the uh the highs 5111 and the overall high 5119 got to 5114 that certainly looks like it wants to test the top had more volume does a doji which can be, you know, up or down, next bar tells us. Uh, but that high volume high on the weekly, still up there, still wants to get tested. Switching to the NDX. Now the NDX, not as strong, still inside uh, the big bar back up off the breakdown bar. Inside of it, still hasn't done anything, still has its high out there, um, goes over back under more volume. This also looks like it can test higher as well. The Russell. Now the Russell is the one we were talking about. It gets over the high, so that's going to be a trend transition uh, back to sideways. 1261.02, and it does it on slightly more volume, actually decent volume comparatively. So that, if anything, says it's going to try to get to the 20, the 1265, 1266 area, and potentially crawl on back up to the high 1275. So. That's a uh, ABCD structure on the upside, but as we know, all of these have been failing, so I don't know that I put a lot of weight on this, but it is there nevertheless, and we have to keep, you know, looking at these things and expecting that at some point they will start fulfilling again, either to the upside or the downside. But right now, Russell trying to move higher. Looking at it on a weekly, you can see the breakdown bar top 1275. I suspect that is where it will have trouble as it heads up. Let's look at the um, sectors real quick. We'll start with the socks. Uh, the socks 
of course, had the huge run-up as a result of all the merger and acquisition. Today, volume really comes into this. I'm not sure why. Uh, let me see what the SMH did. And uh, it trades back about halfway down that bar. SMH is not nearly the volume, so something inside the socks. Uh, but fading back in, right, trying to come back to do a retest regenerate that's bullish. And, uh, you know, that test is back down here where it broke out. So we'll see how it fades in there and what it does. You know, there's no volume on this one. Uh, there was on the socks. Not sure why the difference. I really haven't, you know, you'd have to dig into it and see what the stocks are inside of it. If we look over at the IYT, remember this had broken down, gotten underneath the lows down here. It's coming back to do a retest, regen, and inside that now, it's a bearish retest and regenerate. Going to try to push into that test within six bars so that says it can get to the other side which means around 154.61 uh, the other swing point in there is about 165 I believe excuse me 155 and 155 uh, 154 so that's the test that's what it's going to try to do and right above that you got the breakdown bar with all the volume so this will be a test from a bearish perspective uh, that will probably give us some clues just like the Sox is doing it from the bullish perspective. XLB uh, over under mess nothing there. XLE was actually weaker today. Uh, this one keeps coming down. It's coming back into this bar and as I said that's going to be the bar. That's the March 18th bar. You got a 78 roughly uh, high. That's the bar to measure against. Financials were strong today with the bonds pulling back, uh, yields rising, uh, financials kind of like that, to move higher. And I don't know, this still looks like a range. Let's look at it on the weekly. Yeah, it's still a range. They skate. <laughs> it's like the market. They keep hanging there, but they can't do anything about it. XLI, let's see what this one looks like. And it crawls back into the range. Uh, the XLK was actually weak today, which was interesting, um, relatively speaking. It's really just a range trade. All these are range trades. The only one I saw that really got hit today was the utilities again. Pushed volume. It's pushing the lows. If you look at it on the weekly, this looks like it's getting ready to break. So you got utilities pushing down. You got the transports pushing down. And let me see what the XLP did, also pushing down. So the safety sectors are pushing lower. You got sideways in most of the uh, sectors where people kind of get, um, you know, start pushing their, their money into for a, uh, an advance. It's still just mixed. I, I just can't find a lot here to get excited about. Let's look at the world markets right quick, see if there's anything here. And I'm going to start in Europe because they had a nice little rally today and they gave it all up and had more volume, less volume. So you go over back under, less volume. That's on the CACs. That still looks range bound. And let's see what the DAX did. Same thing, over back under. These still look like they're going to try to move lower. And the Euro was hurting them today because if you look at the Euro, the Euro had a nice spike up. Here's the euro spiking back up, some decent volume again. And that one, uh, let's put it on the weekly right quick. That one looks like it's going to try to test up. Yeah, it doesn't have a swing point high, but it still looks like it's going to try to test up to the swing point high that was there prior. Again, it could be an ABCD structure. It's definitely got a decent move going to the upside. Shanghai last night uh, was a doji. So you kind of get a doji as you get towards the top. The volume's all up there. If you're bull, you really don't want to see it get up there and fail. 49.85, you're at 49.42, so another 40 points up. So another 1% is all it needs. Uh, but again, as a bull, you'd like to see it just fade back in, do some consolidation, eventually take off. If you get a failure, you could get a heavier consolidation. So we'll see what it does tonight. Right now it's a doji. That can go either way. Hong Kong had a nice little pop, uh, which was contrary to what I thought, although it didn't get very far. 
Uh, this one I still suspect is going to try to come back in and if the uh, Shanghai market does it and definitely probably will uh, Toronto just drifting higher let's see what Australia did it got sold off yesterday and it does again today and that mm -hmm. I suspect is a function of the dollar or the, uh, the Aussie getting higher although it didn't get very far so a lot of trouble there still let's look at India right quick my friends over there keep me looking at this and uh, it's coming back in just like we talked about I did get that final number last night posted it on last night's show I think the number was like 23800 or something and if we look at that the 23800 gets you back into these bars so it would get into these bars not as deep as I was is thinking last night I couldn't add last night uh, but that head and shoulders we were talking about that shoulder the head and the shoulder uh, would get you back into this area uh, let's see here anything else oh let's look at Nikkei right quick still hanging at the highs that one's probably going to drift back into this uh, prior high so when I look at all of this you know folks it's tortured it's a market that can't go higher but yet won't go lower and the result of that is just this you know constant and because your trends are up right I mean you always want to err on the side of the trend and in all these markets trends are up they're not down when the trends up you have to lean with the trend if you're gonna make a mistake you want to make it to the upside not the downside right because at least on the upside even if it retraces on you you still got the trend to support you to get some sort of a move back up to let you out right worst case and so that is the overriding you know kind of mantra that a trader trades with and I'm sure a lot of what you're seeing is that it's the trends up until that changes I'm not gonna just leave now the way it's gonna happen in terms of no longer being up is that you actually get some sort of an exogenous event that spikes it down and then you get a failed bounce it's the failed bounce that kills trends not some sort of a you know I, I keep reading people saying and I'm gonna go back to the S&P I keep reading people saying hey you know the, the 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 markets putting in a top okay so maybe you know maybe it is putting in a top who knows I mean certainly it is you know I could you can read this any way you want but certainly this is more of a kind of a rolling move and that could be a top right that's what happens you flatten out you set it up so that you can actually break down if you look at it on a weekly yeah that's that's kind of a I mean it, certainly we don't have the straight up stuff anymore we're starting to round over right and that could be a top but could be and is is totally different things and until this thing breaks something it doesn't really matter what you think right you you've got to keep with the trend until the trend is broken and right now it's not broken and so you know it doesn't mean you got to be fully invested or, or on margin or anything like that but you know if you're gonna make a mistake make it to the top side don't make it to the bottom side until this thing breaks how does it break well I'm on the weekly that means you got to get a swing point break that swing point right now is down here now if this goes another two weeks you'll get another one here but it's got to you know it's got to go out another couple of weeks without breaking that that number by the way is uh, 2067 <coughs> excuse me so uh, still a good piece down 40 50 points but 40 50 points isn't that much okay all right so what's tomorrow we got uh, if we think about what's happening tomorrow very light uh, you got uh, Britain coming out with their QE um, statements I'm sure they'll keep doing what they're doing not much else in the way of news uh, the real news is whatever the news flow is out of Europe off of Greece and we keep seeing that you know they are gonna resolve it uh, you know and, and the market expects them to resolve it if they don't resolve it the market could take a hit now I don't know that the markets gonna stay down but it certainly would take a hit 
The other news piece that's coming out, right, in terms of expectations is uh, the employment number on Friday. The market is starting to, th to believe that uh, potentially uh, the rates are going to be ra ra they're going to rise uh, in September. We still don't have that in terms of the Fed, you know, the Fed futures. If you look at those, those are still out around December mostly uh, or into the new year. But, you know, if you get a, if you get a big employment number, you 220, 230, 250, people are going to start thinking, well, maybe, maybe something's happening. And if they do that, then you're going to see these bonds sell off more. If we look at the bonds, they broke today. They're down underneath this. They're doing another ABCD structure to the downside now. And uh, if the bonds really do start screaming lower, I suspect the market's going to take note at some point. Right now, you know, it still could go either way. You're just under it, but you want to see that get back up and over pretty quickly. So the break is there on the, on the B point, and it's also on the swing point low on a weekly. Let's see what the bonds do on Friday. That's going to be the key uh, number in my opinion. Because if they, they really do start to spill, I think it's going to be a problem for the markets. Folks, have yourself a great night. I'll catch you tomorrow. Uh, we'll do it all again. I'll see you then. Take care.